see this is what the wax looks like when you buy it. This is a 10 pound box and it's just flakes of soy wax. So why soy wax? Well there's a couple reasons actually. One of the fundamentals of my candle making is I don't want to create anything in the landfill. That's why when I'm doing my candle making I make sure I use reusable jars that can be used over and over again. I specifically attach my wicks to the bottom using a putty that can easily be cleaned up. So somebody could actually use this jar after melting their candle, cleaning it out. And you can clean it out with just a little bit of alcohol. No, not vodka. A little isopropyl rubbing alcohol will clean it up, remove all the wax from it. And uh, use it to put up some peas or carrots or whatever you're canning, some jelly. And you can get it perfectly clean and can jelly in the jar so you have the ability of recycling it. So all of my ingredients, all the things that I'm using, including my wax, which comes from soybeans, right? Soy wax comes from soybeans. I don't eat soybeans because I don't like the effect they have on the male libido. But nonetheless, soybeans are good for making wax. And if I can make candles out of soybeans, then it's a, uh, a sustainable product. I'm not using paraffin, which comes from you know, oil and gas production. So I like the idea of using a natural um, product that I can raise in my garden, something I can plant and raise myself. Although I don't plant and raise it myself, I buy it and use 10 pound, 50 pound containers, but it is what it is. So we're gonna wait a little bit, let my uh, wax cool down just a little bit and we'll pour the next one. Go ahead and measure our wax. Now see, I gotta be between 125 and 145, I'm at 150. So that's still too hot. Gotta let it cool down a little bit more before I can pour in my, uh, my scent and put in my colorant so that's what we're that's what we're waiting on now just gotta be patient you can see here there's the ones I've gotten done so far they're all in various stages of cooling the first ones I poured are almost completely solidified up there in the front then the frankincense and myrrh they're real dark colored ones and then this is the honey uh, colored ones. I think the orange is kind of honey like. It'll, it'll darken uh, as it waxes over and cools off. So we'll see how that becomes. In the meantime, let's get this focused so you can see. I think right about there's a good spot. Hundred and forty seven, couple more degrees. You know, I think we're close enough. It said one forty five, but my flash point is one seventy on my on my oil, so I think we're good. Let me first start out by putting my scent in. And I'm gonna try to pour this down on the lip so as to not make bubbles. Kind of like pouring a beer, you, you, you pour it down the side of the glass. So there's cucumber melon. Uh-oh, it leaked all over my finger now. Got cucumber melon on me. And now I'm going to add green. I think cucumber melon should be a little green. We'll put one, two, three, four drops of green in there. We'll see how green green is. It's waxed in there a little bit. Oh wow, look at that, way too much green. Way too much green. See, this is where I'm learning, guys. That's way, that was four drops of green. Look how much that turned that just wowzers. Now, right, let's pour these. This one's going to be where they're almost full. I had a lot of wax in the measuring cup this time.
Yep. Yep, there we go. Well, there you go, kids. That's how old Grandpa makes candles. Uh, it's a start. I got a lot to learn still. Uh, a lot of things I'm not sure about, like whether or not my candles will have a good burn rate or whether they'll have a decent heat pool. The volume of the candle and the diameter of the jar um, relates to the diameter, thickness, and type of wick being used. The wick has to get hot enough and, and maintain enough heat to get a nice clean burn of the candle. Have you ever gotten a candle and noticed that it left wax on the outside? It didn't, you know, didn't keep it clean all the way down? That's too cold of a pool. A lot of your commercial candles uh, will do that. A lot of your commercial candles, they, they, you know, they, stick, they stick a wick in the middle and they don't care if they're doing a poor job. I want to make sure, because I want people to recycle my jars, I want to make sure that when my candle burns, it burns clean. And it doesn't leave a bunch of waxy residue in the bottom of the, of the, the thing. I want to make sure that the wick can pop out cleanly. And so how you clean up the jars is, is very simple. It's just the opposite of what I'm doing here. You get an old pot, heat it full of water, get it over uh, 150 degrees or thereabouts, and put the jars in it and boil the jars and the wax will come out of them. It'll, it'll melt and it'll come out. And so you can skim that wax off the top and you can actually skim it off the top and recycle it if you want. Or you can skim it off the top onto a paper towel or something, throw it in the garbage if you don't want to get rid of it. Uh, I mean, wax is wax. You can melt it and reuse it until you burnt it and consumed it. Wax can be melted and reused over and over and over and over and over again, so. Well, there you go. My first batch of what I make, two, four, six, I made eight candles today um, in a matter of, I don't know, hour and a half while I'm learning how to do this. Maybe it's been two hours. I don't think it's been two hours, maybe an hour and a half. And uh, now that I have a little bit more experience, I can, I can do a lot more here in the near future. Um, I bought 10 pounds of wax and, and this, this is interesting. I bought 10 pounds of wax. Well, I have 12 8 ounce jars. So each jar is a half a pound. So 12 jars should be 6 pounds of wax. Looking at my wax container here, I would say that may be accurate. That may be accurate. So, um, 10 pounds should get me 20 jars then of making that uh, wax. The other things that I have to experiment with is just how much, how much scent I'm adding per candle and how much colorant I'm using. Apparently four drops of green, way too much. Way too much green. One drop would probably be a lot, actually, looking at how dark those became. So, learning curve, guys, it's a learning curve. I'm getting there. We'll see how these cool off, and uh, we're going to give them a day, let them cool off, and then I will show you what they look like. Or maybe I'll end this video here, and I'll show those to you during my live stream on Sunday. That sounds like a plan. That sounds like more fun. Anyhow, guys, look, this is a great thing. Sit around the house, enjoy a beer, make some candles, have some fun. Not a lot of hard work to it. This is a great thing to do, like, on a cold day when it's snowing outside or it's raining outside or, you know, you just don't want to go outside and have to deal with the weather. Uh, you know, homestead, you've got a lot of critters and stuff to take care of, things you got to do, mowing the grass, cutting hay, whatever. But during the winter time. A fella could make a whole lot of candles and put them up in inventory and have a nice little side hustle together for yourself. If I had one of those, you know, uh, heaters that would hold, you know, 40, 50 pounds of wax, I probably could crank out, you know, a couple hundred candles a day. I mean, really, you could do a couple hundred candles a day. And so, 
you know, in a week you could have a thousand candles, 1,200, 1,400 candles. In a month you could have, you know, 5,000 candles done. Well, you know, 5,000 candles is, is a nice piece of change, you know? And then as your orders come in for them, you just package them up and ship them. They don't go bad. They don't ruin, they don't go bad. Once you make a candle, it's inert. It can stay forever. It has a perfect shelf life. Uh, much like making my soaps. My soaps, the longer my soaps stay on the shelf drying, the better they become. So, all right, well that was candle making. I, I've got uh, four more jars this size and I've got a dozen of a little bit larger jars. The larger jars though, I need to get some wood wicks for them. I wanna do some crinkling wood wicks. You know, I think of a candle as sort of the modern day version of sitting around staring at the campfire. And I don't know about you, but there ain't not a lot much better than sitting around in the evening and staring at a campfire all night. So, uh, candles are the best, next best thing that we have in the urban environment. So if I can get some of those crinkly wood wicks and use them in my somewhat larger jars, I got some 12 ounce jars, these were eight ounces. Um, It'd be nice, be nice. So that's what I've got. I've got some more colorant after, not colorant, I don't need colorant, I need scents. I need some more scents. I have some scents for my soap making. Um, I have cucumber melon, I've got warm vanilla sugar, I've got uh, Christmas, Christmas splendor, late for that, and sweet pea and ivy, that's certainly coming in springtime. Um, so I've got some other things, some, some options and some variable things I can do. We'll just see how it comes. Anyhow, kids, be good, be careful, take good care of one another. Ah, uh, more for you in the near future. Bye! Oh, thumbs up. Right there, right there is a thumbs up. Give me a thumbs up. Like and subscribe. Share these videos with your friends so I can build my audience. Please! Thanks, bye.